Now, the national nuclear regulator is expected to make its final decision on the lifespan of the Kuberg nuclear power plant by the end of July or at the very latest August. The request comes at a time when Cape Town is expanding rapidly and activists are concerned about the repercussions of urban development and risk management. I'm now joined by Peter Becker, nuclear power watchdog, who recently won a court bid to be reinstated as a member of the board of South Africa's nuclear safety regulator. Appreciate your time, Peter. Thanks for speaking to us. How do you feel about the court's decision to reinstate you to the NNR board? Well, good afternoon. Good to be with you. Uh, it, it's really mixed feelings because um, the court, uh, the Supreme Court of Appeal now upheld the Western Cape High Court's decision, which was that my dismissal was done in bad faith with an ulterior motive in undue haste uh, via a process vitiated by unfairness. So it was good to get a verification of that from the Supreme Court. Um, but on the other hand, um, my term expired about a week before the Supreme Court ruling came out. Mm. I hope you can hear me. The skies have opened here and the rain is thundering down. So on the one hand, it was good to be confirmed that uh, it was all really made up nonsense, this allegations of misconduct against me. But on the other hand, uh, it was a bit of a mixed victory in that my term has expired. So both the NNR and the minister, although they're lost in court, they achieved what they wanted, which is to exclude me from the board. Yeah, so, so, so obviously uh, I'd imagine that you, you're not going to be reappointed to, to that board. But uh, do you expect any restitution outside of winning this court ruling? Well, I was very clear when I when I started this court case, I wasn't doing it for personal gain. I didn't ask for um, a sort of um, a reward or, or a financial um, anything at all. I was just very concerned that the minister, Minister Mantashe, did not understand the NNR Act, the National Nuclear Regulator Act. He didn't understand his powers. He didn't understand the law. And he uh, dismissed me for reasons which were manufactured by the NNR board. And I wanted that to be taken to court. And it was a public matter of public interest. And also to set a precedent that the NNR cannot get away with this kind of thing in the future um, because the, the court has found very clearly that they cannot dismiss someone because they don't like their opinions about different energy technologies. Well, I suppose it was a bit of, a, of an odd situation. You're anti-nuclear and you're sitting on a board that is pro-nuclear. Uh, is that sound about right? Yeah, so just to be clear, the board is supposed to be entirely neutral. The NNR board, the National Nuclear Regulator, people often confuse it with the National Energy Regulator of South Africa. The energy regulator makes policy about what technology to use and what power stations to be built and so on, or at least approves those decisions of government, whereas the nuclear regulator is concerned purely with safety. So applicants produce documents, they give it to the nuclear regulator, who will then say this meets safety regulations or not. So it's in everyone's interest to make sure that whatever is done in the nuclear space is done safely. So there are people on the board who are very pro-nuclear, people who worked or used to work for the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy. And when I was appointed, uh, it was welcomed by a lot of people, including the board chair at the time, who said diversity gives us strength. So by having diverse opinions, uh, we can all come together, we leave our opinions outside the room, and we make decisions based purely on safety. But the minister decided that those who f find that are, are not supportive or not advocating for nuclear power should be defied, but those who are advocating for nuclear power are fine. And he's actually appeared in the newspaper, and this was discussed extensively in the Supreme Court. He said, if you're on the board and you do not advocate for nuclear power, I will fire you. And that shows a deep misunderstanding of the function of the regulator. Yeah. And in fact, the Supreme Court also found in its ruling that the board itself has started to advocate for nuclear power. And that is very concerning. Peter, what are your main concerns regarding the safety of the Kuberg nuclear power plant? Mm. So firstly, it's a generation two plant. It was built around, uh, designed in the 60s, built in the 70s. It became operational in the 1980s. That design would never be accepted today. You can imagine that since the 1970s, we've had Chernobyl, we've had uh, Three Mile Island, we've had Fukushima. So many more safety requirements are put in place for nuclear plants now. And what needs to happen is that ESCOM must demonstrate that they can bring this 1970s plant up to modern standards in terms 
terms of safety. And if not, the nuclear regulator should refuse that application uh, because their mandate is to protect the environment and to protect the public. And even the location of Kuburg wouldn't be accepted today. It's about 26 kilometers north of Cape Town, the city of Cape Town. And if the worst were to happen, then, and while it's a very unlikely scenario, we, we do know that ESCOM doesn't have, shall we say, a fantastic record when it comes to maintenance and safety of their plants. And if the worst were to happen at Kuburg, it would be catastrophic. It would be the end of the tourism industry in Cape Town, and that would have a huge impact on the tourism industry of the, of the country, and also the end of many exports from the Western Cape, including the collapse of the wine industry. So it's really important at this time that there's oversight. And my role was representing the interests of communities at the time. And that role is currently vacant, and it's been kept vacant for the last two and a half years. Um, so it's a concern that we don't have that aspect of oversight on the board and that there was such a concerted effort to remove the community representative from the board, including making up things, including in the affidavits presented to court, actual perjury, um, saying things that simply weren't true. Um, so it's a concern why there is such a resistance to oversight of the process. Now, what might concern you too is the proposed 20-year extension of Kuberg's operating license uh, impacting How's that impacting urban development in, uh, in Cape Town? Your, your thoughts yeah. around that? Yeah, and that's a big problem. And the city of Cape Town itself has uh, great reservations about it because it is required that there's an evacuation plan around a, a nuclear plant. And that indicates to us that they acknowledge that an accident is possible. You might have to evacuate people. There is a 16 kilometer zone around the plant. We don't know how many people live in there. The last time a census was done, it was about 225,000 people. We also know in Fukushima, the mandatory evacuation zone where, where our visitors is a 20K radius around the plant. So how could we evacuate 225,000 people and where to? And of course, some of those people are well off. They live in Melkbo Strand and so on, and they can get in their cars and they can go visit family or rent a hotel. But the um, poor people in that area who don't have that kind of luxury, they have a real problem. And if they're 100, 150,000 of those, where are those people going to be housed? So there's a lot of question marks around the effectiveness of the evacuation plan. And in fact, last time there was a drill, there were 14 non-compliances found by the National Nuclear Regulator, and they've refused to release the report to the public about how those 14 non-compliances have been resolved. So as far as we know, currently there is no effective evacuation plan if the worst were to happen uh, at uh, the Kuburg the plant. But to answer your question about urban development, the city of Cape Town is very keen to make um, low-cost transport hubs and low-cost housing. And the only direction that they can really go in because of the mountains and the sea is up the west coast. And because of the evacuation plan, they are limited in the number of houses that they can build in that area. So it impacts greatly on the ability of the Cape Town municipality to cater for those in need of low cost housing and affordable transport. Peter, how do you plan to ensure that the voices of the communities potentially affected by nuclear activities are heard and considered by the National Nuclear Regulator? Because it's often in these sophisticated, if you, if you will, uh, issues that many individuals are not familiar with the with the goings on because you you don't have electricity or in some reports that we've uh, we've been carrying out individuals are are being evicted uh, from their various residences if, if if you will and nuclear energy is uh, not top of mind. Yeah, absolutely. And um, many people have um, far more pressing priorities. Um, and just looking at needs, you know, Kuburg uh, during peak demand delivers about 2.2% of the national energy demand. Uh, and when we're looking at the risks and the negatives of that, um, I think it's quite clear that the costs involved, which, by the way, ESCOM continually lie about, even to Parliament, uh, they claim it's going to cost 20 billion, which is what they claimed in 2010. Um, and if we look at the risks and we look at the benefits, it's fairly clear to me it's not worth it. To answer your question, how will I ensure? Well, this is what's so disappointing to me, because I wanted to be a very constructive voice on the board of the NNR and to be of assistance to them with my knowledge since 2009 I've been involved in this field 
and particularly studying Kuburg, uh, and to try and make sure that we force ESCOM to employ the highest and best international best practices and safety standards for that. But I've been deprived of that and deprived of that in an unlawful way. So um, it's difficult to know. It's a difficult question to answer. I wish I could be there um, uh, ensuring that the public is being kept safe, but I've been unlawfully deprived of the ability to do that.